Hi guys, and welcome to another Armin's Tech Talk. Today, we are putting a SSD into a PlayStation 5. This is a four terabyte Fire CUDA SSD from Seagate. This is one of the more expensive SSDs out on the market. Uh, that is compatible with the PlayStation 5. This SSD ran roughly about $939 US. There are cheaper variants of this, the two terabyte, one terabyte, 500 gigs. I do not recall if there is a 250 gig uh, version of this drive. It does come with a heat sink. So that is something for you guys to think about. And, uh, Let's go ahead and let's get started in uh, getting this into the system. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to pull this out of its packaging. Uh, quick review on the packaging. Very smooth, very sleek. I like the uh, reflectiveness of it, uh, but I am not going to take a lot of time uh, with the packaging here. So let's just remove the tape. And the tape is a little bit harder to get at. If you have a knife readily available, I would recommend a knife to get into it. So you pull it out and we got uh, some, looks like stickers and some documentation. And we'll zoom in on that. So here's the documentation for it. Um, you know, it's gonna talk about the normal stuff. Here is uh, just a regular product guide. And up in here, so let's see here. Trying to see how we get at this product. Oh, there we go. So up in here, and I will do a try and do a good job of uh, zooming in on this. It does come in a nice anti-static bag, uh, so not to damage the drive. But let's see if there's an easy way into this bag here, which at the moment I am not feeling. It feels like they almost air sealed the bag, so we just ripped the bag open. And just get right in on that there. So this is the Fire Cuda, again, four terabyte uh, drive. And this is what we are going to be putting in, as you can see, uh, it is uh, 4X PCIe 4, and uh, that's what we're going to be putting in the PlayStation. So let us uh, go on here to removing the top, and we will be back in just a second. Okay, guys, so we've got the PlayStation on its side now, and if you are one of those types that likes a little ASMR, I hope you enjoyed that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to, so you guys get a closer look at this. We are going to get this drive right here. Oh, let's see if the camera will focus on it. Maybe down here, okay. So we're gonna get this drive right here into this boy, this bad boy right here. So what we're gonna do is we're first going to, and I don't know if you need to do this, but this is the only way I know how to take this thing apart, is uh, first we are going to pop this side of the system. You're gonna lift on the PlayStation symbol and you're going to just push down a little bit. This side actually comes off a bit easier than the other side uh, from what I have noticed. Uh, this is the second take of this, but again, so this is uh, what the panel, what the panel looks like. And then on the uh, back side uh, here, there is, uh, I don't see too, too many designs on this side of the panel, but 
uh, you can see that the PlayStation logo does go all the way through. So moving on, we'll set that aside. You can see that there's a little air hole to clean out the fan, but there's nothing on this side of the system. Oh, and you can see once you get the right leverage in the right place, it just comes off. So uh, it's a really, I don't know, it's the first time again taking this off. The design is uh, very interesting. I don't know how I feel about the hooks and the whole sliding everything into place, but uh, that's, that's how this comes off. And the next piece of this is we need to remove the screw. So I don't know if you can see that here. We have, uh, we have a little screw. Let me see if I can uh, zoom in so you guys can see that better. Let me see if I can get this adjusted for you all. And it's going to be right in this area right here. And it looks like a very small uh, Phillips. So that's what we're going to go ahead and use. Nice gray on the cover sheet right there. And we do have a small Phillips head here. Love this uh, screwdriver set. It uh, comes with a magnetic. Uh, it comes with a magnetizer and a demagnetizer if you need that kind of thing. So nice long screw. We're going to set that aside and we're going to pull off the drive here if I can. There we go. And we have on the inside a very small screw. This is, and it's right here on the edge. And uh, this is gonna be the screw that we have to remove so we can hold down the SSD. As you see that the port for the SSD is over here on this side, and you, that's where you plug it in. So, I think we can use the same driver here, maybe. That's looking pretty good at the moment. So for this drive, again, we're gonna want to see kind of how long it is. And it looks like it'll go into this not the longest screw hole because it's not a, this is not um, a 22-110, this is a 2280. And we kind of put the, kind of put this, the holder in there. So you're gonna move the washer from the end to the 2280 position. And then you're gonna slot in the drive. Oh. Apparently, I'm just not good at finding the slot. There we go. And as you can see, once you found the slot, it will extend, like the, the drive will basically pop up like a piece of gum. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna take that small screw
And what would help is if I magnetize this, but we're not going to do that. Because we don't think we need to. Okay, now the drive is in the slot. So very next thing to do here is we're gonna put the cover back on. And it'll just slide into place. Grab the big screw here. And we stick that in and give that a good tighten. You don't want to over tighten. You don't want to strip the screws. So very next, the next thing to do after that is we want to start popping covers back on. Of course, uh, the opposite way in which they came off. So you're going to want to be line up the, line up the spots and You'll hear a really loud snap, really loud snap. You probably heard that in the microphone. Uh, don't be worried, you didn't break anything. It just sounds that loud. So you're gonna flip it over here. We're gonna grab our other side. And you're gonna make sure, again, everything is lined up and you're gonna snap it closed. All right, guys, so that's physically putting the, that is physically putting the drive in the PlayStation. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna format this and we are uh, gonna boot it up and see what happens. Be back with you in just a minute. Okay, guys. Now that we have the console set back up and connected to the television, and uh, what you're seeing here is a uh, CX 77 inch OLED, but that is another story for another video. Uh, the contrast is adjusted so you guys can see the TV uh, pretty well as I'm recording this off the television and recording this on the camera. So. The M.2 is in, uh, I took out the external drive. We can plug that in uh, later and transfer videos, but uh, at this time, I just wanna show you guys the process of installing the M.2. So we're gonna select format M.2. We're gonna hit, squ uh, not square, excuse me. We're gonna hit cross or X if you prefer. Format M.2, don't turn off your PS5 or remove the M.2. Excuse the autofocus on the camera. It doesn't like deep blacks apparently. So we will switch that to manual focus here. Okay, the read speed. Make sure that this is in focus for you guys. And we will just just in a little bit more. Okay. And so the read speed is uh, of your M, excuse me, the read speed of your M.2 SSD is as follows. If you experience problems while playing a game installed in the M.2 SSD storage by installing it in the console storage, we're gonna hit so we see that the read speed is 6,558 megabytes. This at particular M.2 SSD is rated for 7,300 maximum. So uh, I believe that is sequential though, uh, which may affect the performance of the drive. Although this is faster than PlayStation's minimum spec recommendations. So we're gonna hit okay. Your M.2 has been formatted 
to change where your games are installed, go to settings, storage, installation location to safely remove your M.2, turn off your PS5 first. Well, of course you would turn off your PS5 first. You don't really wanna be fiddling around with things that, well, carry electricity. Electricity is dangerous. Electricity, if you misuse it, means you might be dead. Ask any electrician, they'll tell you. So we're gonna hit okay. Okay, so we've gone ahead, we've rebuilt the system, uh, the everything, and we are now in. And let's see if we can uh, get over to some settings here. I'm going the wrong way for settings. And we want to go down to storage. And we can see that the M.2 storage is here. And we can see that the free space available is four terabytes. So we have four terabytes of storage on our system now. This is an addition to the 660 some odd gigs that comes with the PlayStation. This is gonna be more than likely enough storage for the lifetime of this console. So let me get down to a little bit of an opinion piece here. A lot of you are asking, hey, you know, you said that at the beginning of this, this storage device costs so much. Guys, if I'm doing a channel, you know, on a PlayStation that I'm just recording stuff on or game capturing stuff for the channel, I want to take stuff on and off. I'll do that. No problem. But if I'm just sitting down and I just want to pick up something real quick, I want all my games on there because... I have a ton of a backlog. You guys will see some of this backlog in December when I'm making some of these videos, but this is why I want this much storage. Yeah, it's a crazy amount, but over the lifetime of the console, if I play this console for 10 years, no, the storage doesn't per se pay for itself, but the cost per year, of course, goes down. I don't trade my consoles. Guys, you'll see, I've got stuff going all the way back to the NES. That's 20 years ago. That's, I mean, that's more than 20 years ago. That's 30 years ago. I was eight years old. If I hold on to this thing and I'm still playing with this thing in 20 years, 25 years, the drive's paid for itself. I'm not worried about the drive. And SSDs have a great longevity to them because there are no spinning parts. I don't think there's anything more that can be said in regards to that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually hope you give this video a like, uh, a like and a thumbs up. And do leave me a comment down below. Would you put storage in your PS5? Would you just do the external storage so you can cold store games and then swap them back onto the internal drive to play them and put your PS4 games on there? Or do you think it's absolutely insane to buy another drive for your PS5? Let me know, comments below. And if you guys like this content, go ahead, once again, give the video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel to see more content in general. I do have more videos coming of similar and different ilk so that you guys can see a variety of things from me, whether it's technology or it's games. Again, you're looking at a off-screen shot of a CX 77 inch. We can talk about that and what we're expecting for 2022 when it comes to LG OLEDs. There's a bunch of different things that we can talk about, guys. But for now, I hope you're taking care of each other out there, and I'll see you in the next video.